G'day everyone. Uh, in this video we're going to be covering a definite integral um, which is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x divided by co uh, 10 of x, sorry, or alternatively x multiplied by cot of x, depending upon how you want to put it. Now, um, in order to tackle this um, integral I'm going to use a combination of Feynman's trick with the dominated convergence theorem and we will also be using uh, Leibniz integral rule. Um, but the general mechanism of what we're doing here is again Feynman's trick and constructing a differential equation in which the solution um, to that differential equation or an instance of the solution to a differential equation satisfies um, this integral, so is this integral. This is again a very common technique and is very often used when it comes to Feynman's trick. You, you know, the general premise with Feynman's trick is you take an integral. It's either parameterized or you introduce a new parameter within it and make a new function or take, as I said, or take the existing function and then you apply some sort of a tra some transformation to the integral. It could be a derivative, it could be a Laplace transform, a Fourier transform, a Mellon transform, whatever it may be. And then based upon that transformation, you evaluate the integral and then you take the inverse transform in order to be able to resolve it. So, you know, if you take the Laplace transform, you then take the inverse Laplace transform. If you differentiate, you then integrate and so on and so on. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do here, and it's not absolutely necessary, but I really want to get rid of this tan of x on the bottom. And so the way that I'm going to get rid of the tan of x on the bottom is I'm going to let x equal arctan of u. And so then we have tan of arctan of u, which would make this a u. And it'll bring it up, you know, the, the downside of that is it's going to convert this x into an arctan, but it'll get rid of having the tan of x on the denominator. So that, that is my motivating principle right now. Okay, so as I said, we're going to let x equal arctan of u, which means dx, my apologies, this should be du, is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1. Rearranging this into the form of dx equals, we have dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. So again, remember, this should be du. Okay, so that's what we have with here. This is what the dx is going to be replaced with. We know x here is going to be replaced with arctan of u. Um, the x on the top here, because x equals arc tan of u, that means u equals tan of x. So, well, I didn't need to include that, my apologies, that comes into the limit. But this x here is going to be replaced with arc tan, arc tan of u. So the final remaining step that we need to do is that we need to transform our bounds. So, as x equals arc tan of u, that means that u equals tan of x. And so we're transforming this integral from something to do with x into something to do with u. And so we need to make these bounds u-based, not x-based. So for the lower bound, when x is equal to 0, we have u is equal to tan of 0, which is just equal to 0. For the upper bound of pi over 2, we have x is equal to pi over 2, which means that u is equal to tan of pi over 2. Um, tan of pi over 2 is actually discontinuous, but it actually has a limit of positive infinity. So now we know how the bounds are going to be transformed. We know what's going to happen here. We know what's going to happen here and what's going to happen here so we can do the integral. Um, so we can apply the, um, the substitution, I should say, to the integral. So the original integral, which is what we have here, becomes the integral from 0 to infinity. As I said, we just did this here. x gets replaced with arc tan of u. We have tan of x, which is tan of arc tan of u times by, and our dx term, as we resolved up here, is 1 on u squared plus 1 du. So, simplifying this out, r tan of u obviously just remains as it is. Tan of r tan, so this is f of f inverse, which is just equal to u. And then the resulting term is u squared plus 1. So we've transformed it again from this form that we have here, where we have now gotten rid of tan of x from the denominator. And just so you guys are aware, so you're not just thinking, well, where is he just pulling these random substitutions? My motivation was I wanted to get rid of this off the denominator. Even though it creates an arctan on the top, which may be a more difficult function to deal with, generally not actually, believe it or not, with these integrals, um, it makes it, in general, easier to deal with it on a numerator. Okay, so now we have this integral here, and the question is, how are we able to resolve it? Now, if this u term wasn't here, we have a situation of arctan multiplied by its derivative, which would make this really easy. Unfortunately, though, because we have this u here, we need to get rid of it somehow. So what I want to do, and this there, there's multiple ways in which you could go about it, but if I introduce a new function with Feynman's trick and introduce a new parameter into here, then that means that when I take the derivative, 
using the chain rule, it's going to have a dot u at the end of it. So if I put a t here, it's going to be f, you know, the derivative, remember like our chain rule, the general rule, dy dx is dy du dot du dx. That du dx, that final part, is going to be a u term, which will cancel out with that. So that's the, the uh, motivation for the next um, set, step that I'm going to take, which is to employ Feynman's trick, which um, requires the dominated convergence theorem. So our original integral, which is what we have here, sorry, I've, I've accidentally put in the same step twice. Let's go to the next step here. We're going to introduce a new function j of t, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of arc tan of tu over u times u squared plus 1. So you'll see here with the integral that we are trying to resolve here, I've just introduced a t in this top part here, and it's for the exact reason that I just went through, that when I take the derivative with respect to t under the integral sign, that requires the Leibniz integral rule, which we'll go into in a sec, the end component of that will have a dot u which will cancel out with that. So that should make this a much, much easier situation to deal with. Now, it does in this case, and that's why I'm doing it in this video, but it need not be the case in general to do it that way. But often if I see a situation where I've got a u or an x or whatever the variable is that I want to get rid of, if there's a function on the top um, that I can take the derivative of, then by the use of the chain rule, I know I can always get rid of it. It may actually make it worse, but quite often it makes it better. So here in this case, we're going to set t to be a positive real value. So it can be greater than or equal to zero. Um, you could probably deal with it in terms of complex values, but I'm just dealing with a purely real base approach. We see here that our original integral, which is what we have here, i, is just j of t when um, evaluated at t is equal to one, which is what we have here. Okay, now 